I am uh, going to talk about batteries included. I want to talk about enabling contribution to uh, open source projects, and I'll get into a little bit more of that as we go. Um, but first, me. So uh, I'm Aaron Aldrich. I am the face on the right side, not the rest of my family on the left. Um, but I put them there because they're adorable and I like to look at them when I'm away from home. Uh, I'm a developer advocate with Elastic. And uh, besides that, I work with uh, PJ Haggerty at Prompt, at mhprompt.org, uh, getting a conversation about mental health and tech going. Uh, I also organize her for DevOps Days Hartford and the DevOps Connecticut Meetup. Uh, my information is at the bottom of the slides, but that appears to be cut off on the projector. So there it is. You'll have to memorize it for the rest because you can't see it. Um, but yeah, the, the theme with all of this is community. Uh, one of the things I really like doing is enabling people to get together, especially people that might not otherwise come together in the same place, uh, talking about things that interest them, um, just really seeing what happens when humans interact. And so I really am drawn to open source software. I like this concept that we've got a unifying thing, this open source project uh, that we rally around. We want to make sure that we're enabling new people to come into that as well. Because any community that starts excluding people instead of including them starts to stagnate. It doesn't really grow in the ways that we want it to. So as I'm listening to open source conversations, I hear this phrase a lot, pull requests welcome. And I'm just like, well, the word welcome is there, but it never feels like a welcoming phrase. And then I heard this uh, quote, which was pull request welcome is open source speak for go away, kid, you're bothering me. And it sort of seemed true when I put it in that context. Every time I've heard, well, pull request welcome, it sort of seemed to end that conversation about how we can enable things and how we can make it better. Uh, it didn't seem like a welcoming conversation for how can I take part in your project? How can I help you out? This sort of seemed to end that and push people away. Uh, so I want to look at things differently. I think we should welcome people by enabling their success. You know, just like any good product out there wants to reduce the barriers between I want to partake and moments of joy so they can part with your money. Here we want to reduce the barrier between I want to contribute to your code and actually successfully doing that so we can grow both on the community side and improve the actual projects we're building. Uh, so some context, I want to orient us a little bit. Uh, this all functions around the project that Elastic built called Beats. Does anyone know about Beats or have used it? Just sort of what I thought. I know people have heard of it, but don't have a lot of context around it because they use sort of the Elk stack and stuff there. So I want to orient us a little bit on what that is so we understand where we're coming from. Um, so first, things we're not discussing, root vegetables. Beats are not that in this context. Things by Dre are also not discussed, uh, nor will we be talking about cartoon bands from 90s uh, TV shows. But this logo is what we're discussing. So it's Elastic Project called Beats. And where this fits into the Elastic environment are on the endpoints shipping data into uh, Elasticsearch or Logstash or whatever message queuing you've set up for your Elastic pipelining, that's where it goes. Um, but the main thing is beats are sitting on these endpoints, and they're shipping lots of different types of data. We don't really know what systems you have out there. So if I'm developing a project, you ship data from all of your unique systems, that's kind of challenging. So we started with Packet Beat was the original project that eventually got acquired by Elastic, uh, dealing with network traffic. But we branched that out, realized people want to send log files. So we have File Beat, we have Metric Beat for metrics. Uh, win log beat, because it turns out Windows logs are special. And uh, audit beat, which is really a specialized metric dealing with like audit D and your actual system metrics. Uh, and heartbeat for what interesting things is my system? Is it up? Is it up the way I want it to be? Um, so we've already sort of taken a look at all of the different data types that we want there. But even with that, we know that people have different systems on the end. They all store that data differently or look at it differently or have different types of metrics they want to collect. So just the structure of the application was built modular. We have this library underneath, this libbeat, and even that has anchor points that can be turned. We've got, it's probably hard to see from everywhere, but you've got things like auto discovery and processors, inputs and outputs that can be tweaked inside of libbeat. Uh, all of these different beats have different things that can be turned, different modules that can be enabled or created or customized for those environments. And we've got people that can contribute community beats, which we'll come back to as well. Um, so that's great. We've got a lot of that built into the product. But what about documentation? How do we know what those modules do? So 
inside of the actual source code that's there, we've started documenting that in this fields.yaml file. Um, because of the way Beats work, we want Beats to eliminate some of the tediousness when we're actually shipping stuff through. So all of our Beats need to include Elasticsearch index templates. They need to include Kibana index patterns. They need to tell people what they're actually doing, um, which would be tough if you have to develop all that yourself, because you're not just writing now a lightweight Go application for your custom endpoint. You also now have to learn about Elasticsearch indexing, and you have to learn about Kibana index patterns and how to write those in JSON in order to ship them. So we've eliminated that. You write it in a single YAML file, you document it once, and that sends everything out everywhere it needs to go. So it's got some syntax just for keeping track of those. Generally, you're keeping track of uh, either a group of different data points, or it's a number or a keyword, and what format that's in for Kibana, which seems like a lot of data here, so just looking at an example is a little bit easier. Uh, for instance, for metric beat, we're tracking memory. That's going to be a group of different numbers. So we've got a description. It contains local memory stats. So it's already documenting what it is. We know that it's a group. And we've got a list of fields here. In this case, we've got uh, total memory that we want to track, which is going to be a number, so it's a long. It's going to be bytes. So we know that in Kibana, we want to roll up as bytes, not as just a number. Uh, and we've got a description for what it actually is. And this can go on for as many data points as we have, documenting what you're actually tracking, how it should be tracked, what format you're expecting it to be in, is all being captured in that file. Um, so the documentation gets shipped right along with the beats that we have. Uh, and then that segues into automating all of the boring, terrible stuff you want to do, or all of the poop emojis in your life. Um, again, by design, we've got a lot of this built in when we talk about the modules that come here. Uh, so for FileBeat, you don't have to point to all of these logs individually, for instance, and tell it how to interpret those. We've started incorporating things that uh, are used consistently, things that people use a lot and build modules for them. They've got sane defaults. You can take these modules and you can start monitoring your Nginx logs without having to go through and do all of the work to figure out where they all are. We're starting to automate those processes. Metric Beat does the same. And a lot of these came from communities creating custom beats and trying to monitor different metrics. And now we can go out and say, hey, people are using this a lot. Let's incorporate this into the base code. Uh, and we build it into the CLI, too. So the setup process starts happening automatically. All the tediousness of having to build dashboards and having to build all of these custom pieces of work to actually make your logs look meaningful to you, we've started providing same defaults for and a setup process. And that's just in the design of the product itself. That's great if you're actually using it. But we want to talk about contribution as well. So this is the first thing I can actually show something of a demonstration with where we've got um, a contribution process. So if you want to actually write your own custom beat, you could have to pull down the whole source code and start to rewrite everything yourself, or you can just actually pull it into your own process. And you can actually specify, as you see here, the actual type of beat that you want to build. So for instance, if we want to build our own uh, metric set for metric beat, we don't want to have to build the whole thing over again. Actually, let me just show here. We want to create a new just that simple for running a script. And now we can see we've got a new, oh, it was there before too. That's why I didn't do anything interesting. All the stress of live command line. So that'll actually create the folder for us and pull the data from from the Elastic project. And we don't have any binaries here. We just have sort of the guidelines of how to actually do this. So we've also enabled the, the setup process. We built it into make files for all the scripting. So it actually goes through and says, all right, great. We don't have any metric sets here. So what module do you want to create? And it uses some of that Python scripting to actually go through and set up all the required files for building that module.
This is fun. I didn't know which desktop it would open in. Um, I don't think I can actually increase the font size on the project side of that. But as we go through and look into the modules, we've now got this DevOps Days module that's been built. And we've got this demo.go metric set that we have. And as it is, it can compile into something, even though we haven't edited the code. But it exists there, and we can just start to go in and, and actually work on that uh, and build out the custom logic that we want to have for that particular metric beat. And if we look into the main files, we're seeing it's, it's importing already the metric beat code that's there. So it's not just starting over fresh, where you have to learn some of the logic of how it's gone together. You're not trying to edit on top of existing code. It creates its fresh beat, but actually pulls all of the component parts that make metric beat work into that new custom place. So you can work on your own logic for it. You can work on um, your custom modules or metric sets and have those in that own their own uh, environment there. And whenever you've got that set up, we do have the fields YAML files that keep track of what we're the data that we're tracking, it sort of automates some of the basic creation for that. And there is the config YAML file here that actually builds out the custom configurations for your metric set. So you can go in and edit, for instance, if you've got uh, a specific port that this listens to, and save those for custom configurations as you go through. So now when you actually make the binaries, it'll include those defaults in the settings. And again, just a make file builds that out. And we have make update as well that would take, for instance, if you edit out that fields.yaml file, it goes through and actually generates all of the JSON content for Kibana or for Elasticsearch. So you don't have to learn the proper syntax for that. You don't have to learn how to do it. You just edit it once in that YAML file, and then it sends it out everywhere it needs to go. I've lost my presentation under Windows. OK. So that was it. So the make setup can actually go through and uh, build the structure that you need, create the metric sets, do some of that automated work. So you don't have to learn the file structure. It just builds it for you. Uh, and we can make the actual binaries as well and update all of the relevant uh, context there. Uh, so this is actually what we showed. This, this main import trick actually shows in the main package, it's pulling in the metric beat contents. And so you're just adding whatever custom logic you have on top of that without having to rewrite or, or copy the direct code for all of metric beat and have that mixing in there. OK, so once we build it, we want to test it as well. So we want to make sure that what you've got is working. And that could be up to the contributor to have to build their own test environments and actually run through and make sure this beat works in the bigger environment. Or we could just ship it for them. Uh, so as we actually go in to our source code, we'll find even with the new beat that we've created, and I've sh shifted to one prepared earlier, um, you've got this environments file. And it contains all sorts of information about the actual environment you want to set up. And if you look into it, it shows where you can configure it for your own custom test environment if you need to configure Elasticsearch a certain way. Um, but if we just run make start, it actually goes through and launches a small Elasticsearch cluster for you with Kibana and Logstash, so we can actually verify everything's working. So we can go in and see, look, Elasticsearch is on. Oh, don't go to the logout. That would be trouble. And if Elasticsearch is on, we probably have Kibana there too. So great, so we've actually loaded our test environment for it. Elastic is already there, and it was included when I tried to work on the beat. I didn't have to go build this myself. It was already there when I copied the code over. Um, so just an, ex an example of that, we can actually load up this demo beat that I've got, except that I can't see my mouse, so that's going to be a challenge. This will be fun. And all this uh, demo beat does here is just pull from this web to, I'll show it here.
so we've just got a little web server running in Go. It just basically loads up a counter for how many times it loads, right? So it's going to go through and just count them here and have some information that gets pulled as well. Uh, the demo beat really just pulls this and looks for changes. So now I can't see what I'm doing. It's already got the index pattern pulled into it, everything that it knows about the data. We didn't have to program that separately. That was already included once it started sending it, and we've got data coming through. So just that simply, I can test a beat that I've made. I, I pretty much went through the steps except for actually writing the code of importing the new data into a new folder, actually creating that new beat and testing it in that environment. It can all be done fairly quickly and without having to understand exactly how to set up that whole environment, dude. I can work on just that one portion of the project uh, fairly easily. Uh, so there's also room as you dig into some of the source code for the other modules that exist, we've created test folders as well. So all that test folder ships with the source code, you can build that into your own metrics to say, hey, this is the format of my data, so use this as a test to make sure you're pulling the right information through as you edit it. Um, so all of that testing is brought with the process for how to create new content. <coughs> so once that's all gone through, we have to share that as well. Because if people are just developing on their own, that's great. But if they're not contributing back to the open source, well, then that's just existing in a vacuum. So one of the other things we've done is we've got this community beats portion of the site. It exists in our documentation. And if you've developed your own community beat, you can actually go in and just issue a pull request to this file to have your beat listed here. And all of these are links to folks' own repositories. These aren't elastic repositories there. The beat had to be brought in. They built their own custom beat. It exists there. And they issued the pull request to the community beats file that's actually listing where all those are and all these things the community has built that are novel and useful. Uh, and pointing to their own code, so that can be introduced and dealt with and shared on our forums. So if you want to share it in the open source community there too, say, hey, I built this cool new thing. It's already listed. Here it is, and you can use it. Uh, and it's fairly straightforward. You don't have to make sure it's integrating properly with the base code for your own beat. You don't have to make sure it all works with the existing changes that are constantly happening as we update for new versions. You can kind of develop that on your own as its own standalone beat and not have to worry about that. So that's been enabled as well. We can easily develop this and share it out with the community. These are all the community beats that exist, I think, in February. It's probably added three or four more now at this point. But uh, it's always growing. So people develop interesting data that they want to measure, whether it's Twitter. They've got a Twitter beat to pull data out of Twitter or a GitHub beat because you want to monitor a repository and pull statistics into that. Uh, that's all been developed by someone. So you can even start right from this community beat section and say, has someone already had this novel idea? We can ask the community and not have to redouble work that's already been done. Maybe you can contribute to that custom beat rather than building your own logic from the ground up. Uh, so the main takeaway is that we want to enable that success. All of the things that we're including help people move forward to develop a product and produce something rather than making them learn and come up to speed. We just don't want to learn, right? It's important to have good uh, hygiene for your code. It's important to understand how it fits in the ecosystem, but that's not a barrier to people's success. That's enabled as it goes along the way. And as this code is developed like a metric set or a module for an existing file beat or metric beat that you have custom for your environment, that can eventually be contributed back to our source code. You can test it on your own in this own little small space and then worry about adding it into the source code and having to come up to speed with all that. But it really enables that rapid contribution cycle so folks can get involved right away. And I think that's a great way to start building our communities. Um, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I got 10 more minutes? OK. So it's faster than I thought. There's 10 minutes if folks have any questions. Or if not, you can smell lunch earlier. Um, so as far as how we deal with contribution back to our base, 
Um, we can definitely improve, I can say that much for it. But we've got multiple points of engagement, whether it's, uh, if it's an issue in the existing code and it's still done through GitHub, we make sure our, our main projects are generally accessed both by the public and our developers from Elastic. So there's a lot of engagement on, hey, I worked on this issue, our issues are tracked live there as well. Uh, I don't have any specific tips for how we do that. I thought this was kind of a cool way to just get people up to speed contributing that I wanted to share. So I probably could get details for you, but don't have it off the top of my head. So, yeah. A lot of it came from, sorry. Oh, sure. Uh, so the question was, let me make sure I understand. How do we, how do we determine where those? Um, how do we figure out what to expose, like what to sort of package and, and ship, and where people can work on it versus where we want to keep it larger and, and intact? Um, I think a lot of it had to do with as we design this and find out where we need to customize the beats for different environments. That makes a lot of sense to be that customization point. Okay, here's a, here's a block that we can use as people can customize that. It's built, uh, the other analogy people have said about this is built like Legos, right? So we've got these Lego bricks on the bottom of Libby, but it also has all these interchangeable parts built on top of it because auto discovery works different for different systems, whether it's um, building Docker-based or Kubernetes or whatever your containerization system or orchestration system you're using, identifying that is different. or Maybe people want to output to something other than Logstash or Kafka or Elasticsearch. They want to out output somewhere else, so that can be customized as well. Um, it really came down to organically where these systems need to be customized, and those became those building blocks from there. I, so it's it's there, but it's it's all. So it all started. Packet Beat was a project outside of Elastic initially, and that's dealing with network data. So already we're looking at a couple different points. There's some data we can look at and analyze it, and there's all different protocols for that data. So now these automatically, these protocols are where we're gonna have to have customizations, and there's more than we can count and changes every day, so that's gonna have to be a point. Um, yeah, and then it becomes part of the product vision from there as we build a new beat. Oh, where are we gonna wanna customize that? Where is it gonna be? Yes, we do have that problem. Uh, so that's when we do version increases and there's breaking changes for metric beat, that will change the template for that version. Um, but you can actually pull these builds from whatever version you want to work from. Um, I'm assuming I understand. So like, if there's breaking changes, how do we update the templates that are, are pulled? Um, so there is some work on, on whoever's using that prior version to make those updates at that point. They would have to pull in the new code and make sure everything works and doesn't break at that point. Once, yeah, once you've stepped in, you're dealing with maintenance for that thing that you've created now at that point, yeah. And there's different levels of contribution as well when dealing with beats. Maybe you're working directly on our source code, in which case you probably have to be a little bit more up to speed, but you can contribute directly to the main branch of, of the community. Um, or handling a community beat, you're kind of on your own in that regard, which means you don't necessarily have to update it as long as it's still compatible with the current Elasticsearch version. 